Hello, I'm Charles Little, Curator of Medieval Art at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. We are at the Cloisters, a branch of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Like many museums, the Cloisters has fragments of what were once larger sculptures. These fragments often come from medieval churches which were badly damaged during the French Revolution. Their statues were broken apart and scattered. But some fragments, like this one, were salvaged by neighbors or by collectors. Many pieces were sold and resold, traveling a great distance before they were eventually purchased by museums. We often have no written evidence to tell us the original location of these pieces. We can look at the style of the fragment and compare it with the style of other sculptures, whose origin we do know. But comparing styles is often an uncertain way of discovering the original location of a fragment. I'd like to show you how a new technique using nuclear science helped to identify the origin of one fragment of sculpture here at the Cloisters. This piece has been a puzzle for us. We know it's a fragment of an angel. There's a piece of the wing. This was once part of a relief, but was broken off from its background. My colleague, Georgia Wright, who is also a medieval art historian, will explain how we first tried to identify its origin by looking at its style. As is often the case, there was more than one opinion about where this fragment came from. We found another piece which shares some characteristics of its style. It shows Cain and Abel sacrificing to God. This work is now located in the Fogg Museum at Harvard. We know that the carving of Cain and Abel came from a great abbey in Burgundy called Moutier Saint Jean, which was mostly destroyed during the French Revolution. Because of similarities in style, it seemed possible that our angel also came from Moutier Saint Jean, like the piece with Cain and Abel. But then we found another sculpture that shared certain stylistic traits with our angel. It's a torso of St. Peter with his keys, now at the Rhode Island School of Design in Providence. We know that this figure of St. Peter was once part of the west portal of the great Burgundian Abbey of Cluny, mostly destroyed in the French Revolution. Cluny is only 75 miles from Moutier Saint Jean, the original site of the sculpture of Cain and Abel. So what was the original location of the angel fragment? Moutier Saint Jean or Cluny? More comparison of style did not settle the question, so we decided to use a new technique called neutron activation analysis. Neutron activation analysis can reveal some of the elements making up the limestone from which these sculptures were carved. Most of the limestone is calcium, but there are trace elements which come from impurities. Stones from different quarries, even in the same region, contain different amounts of these trace elements. If two pieces of stone have the same quantities of each element, it is likely they came from the same quarry and the same church. We prepare for neutron activation analysis by taking small samples of stone. We took such a sample from our angel and also from several sculptures that we know came from Moutier Saint Jean and from Cluny. We take the sample from an inconspicuous place. We only need about a gram of stone powder for each sample. We then send the sample to our colleague, Laura Holmes, at Brookhaven National Laboratory. I weigh the samples of stone and seal them into small quartz tubes. The samples are then taken to the reactor where they are bombarded with neutrons. The neutrons convert the elements into radioactive isotopes. These isotopes then emit radiation which we can measure very precisely. Each element in the stone emits radiation at a different characteristic energy level. Our measurements tell us how much of each element is present in the stone. Garmin Harbottle, a senior scientist here at Brookhaven National Laboratory, will explain how we use these measurements. The Trace elements that we use for characterizing the limestone include iron, sodium, manganese, perhaps 10 or 12 uh, of them all together. And what you see here is the basic data, the spectrum of the radioactivity, the radioactive gamma rays from these trace elements. Uh, this is the data that permits us to calculate the concentrations of the trace elements in the limestone and will eventually uh, permit us to plot a graph 
showing a characteristic profile uh, of a particular limestone specimen. This graph shows the concentrations of trace elements in stone from Moutier Saint-Jean. As you can see, the points that are plotted, one for each element, represent the concentrations of those elements. And when we put them all together by drawing the line in, we get something which is akin to a profile. Now let's put some new points on the graph representing the concentrations of the same trace elements, but in stone from Cluny. You can see that the Cluny stone contains higher concentrations than Moutier Saint-Jean. Now let's put black dots on the graph representing the concentrations of the same trace elements in the stone from the angel at the cloisters. And you can see that these black dots fall very, very nearly upon the profile representing the Cluny stone. Once we confirmed that our angel is likely to be from Cluny, we looked more closely at an old drawing made of the portal of the abbey before it was destroyed. There is a figure of Christ in the center, but look at the arches that surround the scene. They contain worshiping angels displayed in profile, so they must have been carved in relief, like our angel fragment. This drawing suggests what our angel may have looked like as part of the portal at Cluny. With the discovery of the original site, or provenance, of this small angel, we have added significantly to our knowledge of what was once a rich program of sculpture on the most important church in Christendom in the early 12th century. The nuclear technique you have seen demonstrated here is supported by the Limestone Sculpture Provenance Project. This project is now analyzing samples of stone from medieval buildings, from medieval quarries in France, and from sculptures and museum collections. The project now has a database of about 1,500 samples. It has created compositional profiles of 80 sites in France. More samples will make this information even more useful to art historians, curators, and geologists. This database is adding significantly to our knowledge of this astonishing period, the flowering of French culture. <laughs>